welcome everyone to our first panel of the industry series. Um, we at the Canadian Film Fest would like to acknowledge that we are in Toronto and are meeting on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and we encourage our audience across Canada to learn and acknowledge the territory that you are on. Welcome everybody to the Canadian Film Fest Industry Series. This is number one of a series of panel events and discussions that we'll be having today. Um, we're presented by Super Channel. Thank you, Super Channel, so much for bringing us all together today and making this festival happen. Um, in real life this year, it's for the first time in a couple of years, so we're just really happy to be in a room with you all. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you all for coming. Um, we're so excited to have these esteemed professionals with us today. Um, we've got Ontario Creates, Telefilm, Toronto Arts Council, Black Screen Office, and Game Theory Films, some very important businesses whose support is integral to our feature film industry in Canada, so thank you all so much. Uh, without further ado, yes, uh, this is James from Telefilm. He'll be, uh, he's streaming in today. Like, look at us, high tech, this new world that we've got going on, it's amazing. Uh, without further ado, I will introduce you to your moderator. Uh, Richard B. Pierre is an award-winning filmmaker uh, whose films have aired on TV and screened at festivals worldwide. worldwide. His, his work tackles a range of genres and subject matter most recently focused on race. Um, he's shot a number of films that have all been funded by the Ontario Art, Arts Council, including his newest film, An Uninvited Guest, which won Best Thriller at the Holly Shorts Film Festival. Um, and was broadcast on CBC, and he directed his first TV series, which airs on BET Plus and Paramount Plus. I don't have the name of that, but I want to hear more about that, Richard. Uh, thank you so much. I'll let you take the floor from here. Sadly, it's all downhill from here. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, I'm just going to like get right into it, because even though we have an hour and 15 minutes or so, that's actually not a ton of time. Uh, first things first, I want to just sort of take a poll of the audience so we see what we're dealing with. How many first-time filmmakers are here? Okay, couple, couple. Um, how many people in the room have applied to one of these funders in the past? Oh, only, only a smattering. Okay, this is great. Um, how many people are expecting to apply to one of these funders, perhaps even this year? That's more like it. <laughs> Um, okay, um, I'm going to do one last little thing, and you're going to think I'm a little annoying for this. Uh, one, I will ask you if you can move down even closer so when we have those questions, which I'm sure you all have, uh, that you can be closer to us so we can hear you. Uh, the other thing I would ask is meet the person beside you and exchange emails, because at the end of all this, hopefully you guys are going to be better situated to actually apply to our funders. And one of the components we're probably going to go over today is talking about the idea of you know building these applications, but making sure those applications are like Teflon. So having that other pair of eyes, who's maybe a fellow filmmaker to look it over, could be helpful, especially if they're a stranger. That's all I'll say. Now I'm going to go on to uh, our our panelists. Uh, if uh, we could just go down the line, and you could each uh, introduce one another or yourselves. <laughs> that probably makes more sense. Um, Hello everyone, I'm Andy Marshall. I'm uh, the manager of programming at the Black Screen Office. Um, in my previous life, and still my current life, I'm a producer as well, uh, many short films, and working on my first feature film, actually. I'm Anna Nuallo. I'm the program consultant for film and TV at Ontario Creates. Um, and I've also produced <laughs> as well. Um, and so, yep, so I'm here, and I'll be funding your next film. <laughs> um, I'm Peter Kingston. I'm the Visual Media and Leadership Programs Manager at the Toronto Arts Council. I'm also an artist and a video maker, making uh, installations, and I used to make shorts and features in my past. Hi guys, I'm Hillary, and I'm the co-president of Game Theory Films. We're a Toronto-based distribution company, and and that's really it for me. I don't I don't have a side hustle. 
Well, thank you for that. Um, James, uh, I hope we can hear you. So tell me about Telephone. Yes. You're good. Um, you can hear me? OK. Uh, I'm James Lutzkum. I'm a content analyst on the feature film team at Telephone Canada in the Toronto office. Uh, and uh, we look at uh, uh, scripts, rough cuts, uh, development, uh, all across the board. Uh, but I'm on the, the, the content, sort of script reading, uh, uh, creative feedback side of it. Thank you, James. I'm sure we're all going to have lots of questions for James. So since you're already on the mic, James, uh, I keep on looking at you on that screen, but I'm going to look at you on this screen. <laughs> um, Tell me a bit about how filmmakers can access Telefilm. I know there's a bunch of different programs, like if I'm a first time filmmaker, what are my options? And we don't need to go into the like minute details of how to apply, because we can all look at that online, but give me an overview. Um, yeah, so um, we've got uh, you know production programs uh, that, that range from Talent to Watch, which is like our micro budget program, uh, entry level, and uh, that has, uh, you know, we've been adapting that over the years. Uh, and uh, there are different ways to apply. You can apply through a partner. You can apply um, through the, the festival uh, uh, qualification stream or apply direct through the uh, underrepresented uh, stream. Um, and then there is the rest of the production funds. So it kind of goes up the line from micro budget at Talent to Watch to what we call the low budget program, which is run by the regional offices, uh, you know, in Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, and Halifax, depending on where you're located. Um, and that's that's for projects budgeted from 250 to 3.5, 250,000 to 3.5 million. And then there's the big budget program, which is 3.5 million and above. Um, and um, we see we see first time filmmakers within all of those programs. It's obviously completely different, uh, you know, circumstances and structures of projects, but uh, we see them, you know, obviously Talent to Watch is for first time filmmakers and at the regional uh, low budget level, we certainly see a lot of uh, first time filmmakers and even at the bigger budget level, sometimes there is that synergy where a first time filmmaker comes in um, through, through that program, that bigger budget program. And the other way, <clears throat> The other sort of access point is in development, um, and there is you can uh, read the guideline. There's a whole uh, there's sort of a qualification level to, to access development. Uh, but if, uh, if you've had a project, a feature that has been uh, released within the last six years, uh, or for the Black People of Color stream, if you've had, um, it could be a short film, TV. Uh, there's a bit more flexibility there with the last six years. Um, or if you've done a Talent to Watch project previously, then you can access development. And so development is, is, is a process of you know, getting your uh, a script phase funded. Um, so those are, the, those are the funds that we basically deal with. All right, thanks for that overview. Uh, Peter, since you have the mic, um, why don't you tell me a bit about how we can access funds via the Toronto Arts Council? And I know you guys would fill, uh, fund shorts as well as features, so I guess we can just mention that. Yeah, so um, there's several different ways. Uh, I'll start with what I do with media arts, and we'll fund shorts and features, um, documentaries. Um, we'll also fund uh, um, game games, if you're making video games, or online projects, if you're doing an online thing, or you're making robots. Um, we can fund that all in, in media arts. Um, and you have to have a, we fund the creator, so we fund the director or the, the artist, we don't talk to producers at all, we, do, we talk to the directors. You have to have a budget of uh, less than $250,000 to come to us, and um, you have to have made one thing before, and uh, that one thing could be something that you made in school, as long as you were the person in charge of making it, and that thing could also be something that, that we don't fund. Uh, we don't fund music videos. So if you have directed a music video, you can come saying, I've directed this, but I'm not making a new music video. So uh, that's for, for everybody who, who lives in Toronto, who f fulfills those criteria. Um, we also have, uh, and that's the one deadline is in October. 
Uh, we have open deadlines for black arts, which you can apply to make a film in um, as well. Or indigenous arts, you can also apply to make a film in. And those are open at all times throughout the year. So um, it's similar, uh, uh, you know, not, there's not really an, a cap. Uh, similar awards, uh, monetary awards are, are available. But, um, and you can come for, for black arts and indigenous arts, you can come for pre-production for media arts income for production or post-production. Thank you for that. Um, Hillary, why don't you uh, tell us sort of a bit about why you're here? Sure. <laughs> um, so I think I'm here sort of for two streams of reasons. And the first is that we have a black indigenous and people of color fund that we set up in 2020. And the idea behind that fund is it's producer driven. Um, and part of that in general is as the distributor, that's who I'm primarily dealing with. So it's producer driven and we have a panel that looks at every um, submission and the resources that we have available from the time we opened it was 100K that we give out in minimum guarantees and 100K in in-kind services. And our partners for that are William White's, Urban Post, uh, and Mars VFX. So since we opened that, we have given away all of those resources. So the idea behind the fund is that none of the partners are looking to recoup. So that is, we are replenishing the fund from the initial round of five films that we've supported, which are all sort of at various stages, but they're starting to enter the festival circuit. So it is kind of a weird time for the fund in that I can say we are going to reopen, but I don't have a date for when we're going to reopen. It's likely going to be late this year. So the other thing that I'm happy to chat about is sort of the distributor's role in this process, where we come on board, what we are looking for, what is a realistic expectation for an MG for various projects, and sort of where we fit in the system. So like for what James was describing with Telefilm, game theory typically sits in that kind of regional space, and that's usually the type of project we're looking for, but that answer is gonna be different for every distributor, and I really can only speak to game theory, but also try me and I'll do my best for others. Thank you for that. Um, Anna, tell me a bit about how Ontario Creates can help uh, a filmmaker. Tell me about your various funds. So I'm on the film fun side. So that is both documentary, drama, and animation. Um, it is feature length only. So it has to be a minimum of 75 minutes. Um, and we have a development fund as well where you can get up to $25,000 for three different development stages. And we also have the production fund, which is up to $400,000. Though I have to say it's been a while since we've given away $400,000. Um, and we have um, two different streams. One is the standard stream, and the minimum budget threshold is a million dollars. So if your film is below a million dollars, you would not be eligible for the fund. If you are coming in under our diverse stream, we actually lower that budget threshold to $750,000. Now those are the figures for drama. For documentary, the standard stream, the minimum is $600,000. And if you're coming in under the diverse stream for doc, it is $500,000. Um, for documentary as well, you also have to have either a Canadian distributor or um, a Canadian broadcaster attached as your trigger for that. You do not need to have a Canadian distributor for your production fund, for your production if it is below the $3.5 million. We're in line with Telefilm on that. Anything above that, you do have to have a Canadian distributor attached as a trigger for your, uh, for your production. Um, and if anybody is interested in doing web series, we also have uh, the IDM fund. I don't do that one, so you're gonna have to take a look at our website, go through the, the guidelines, and then speak to the program consultant on that. But I notice that there's always like a, an overlap between filmmakers and also wanting to do web series as well. So that's definitely something that I would suggest you take a look at. And we also support games. <laughs> So on the IDM fund as well. Um, so yeah, so that's basically like an overview and, pub and book publishers and magazines and music. So we kind of do everything, but that's it. it for it's a pretty broad film. umbrella. Uh, Andy, 
Now, I know you guys don't necessarily fund uh, production, but can you tell me a bit about how someone can access the BSO? And who can perhaps access the BSO? Sure, sure. Um, so, yes, we don't, we're, we're different from everyone else here. You don't come to us with a project that you want to get funded because you wouldn't get funds from us. That's not what we do. Uh, we do programming, and the programming is about skills development, but you get paid for those, uh, that skills development, and then we connect you to people that can help get your project done. So, for example, one of the programs we have is uh, the Rogers BSO Script Development Program. And so with that is a television-focused program uh, for television uh, scripted and unscripted documentary work. You would come, and it's for, it's for black and people of color writers, and so you would come with an idea. You have to show us that you've done something before, whether it's been produced or not, but just that you've written before uh, something in the, screen, in the screen world. And through six months, we pair you up with a mentor, and we take you from this two-page idea that you have to a second draft of a, of a script, of the pilot script for the program. And then by the end of it, we connect you to producers, we have you pitch, and we, we're coaching you along pitching, along writing, all of that uh, throughout the program. And then we have you pitch to producers at the end of the program, with the idea being that they will you know, love the project and take it on and help to further develop it, um, because now you have a script to show them. And that's usually a very important thing for a producer to come on board, is to read, read the script. Or we, uh, they might bring you into one of their writing rooms, because now you have a, a writing sample. And so that's what we found is that a lot of black and people of color writers may not have had the same level of opportunities to get into rooms and to develop their, their craft and skills. And so our approach is to not only develop skills and give people to op opportunities to develop their craft, but also that has to lead to real work because we don't like the idea, we, you know, we call this the emerging hell where you go from one emerging program to another emerging program to another emerging program and you're developing all these skills and you're not getting paid and you're not developing a career. And that's what we're really about is trying to get you to develop your career. So we have the, uh, the writers program, we have the black woman directors accelerator program. The D we're a partner with the DGC on that and uh, from their latest census that they did, less than 1% of their members are black women directors, which is an appalling statistic. So we're trying to rectify that situation. Uh, we also have the Black Creators Festival Initiative. So that's where, where black creators have done a, a film, or they're doing a film. So I was just talking with um, Hillary about one of her filmmakers, Soko Nagash. Um, she's a producer who's got a, who's being, her film is being distributed by Game Theory. And we took her to Berlin, along with four other delegates, uh, to the Berlin Isle Film Festival, introduced them to co-producers and to financiers and programmers and a whole bunch of folks. And they made some really great contacts. And I think her film is now being advanced because of having gone there. And so we're trying to really get uh, the work of black creators, primarily black creators, we are called the Black Screen Office. So just to give you a clue, <laughs> right? Um, we only have one program that includes people of color as well, and that's the writer's program. But the rest are really focused on black uh, creators uh, because we found the barriers have been that much more intense. I mean, look around the room. I see maybe three that I can visibly identify as black folks here. One works with me. <laughs> OK? And so it just, you know, to me, you can say, oh, maybe they're not interested. That's one way you can look at it. But the other way to look at it is, oh, there's a lot of things that's probably in those people's way, right? In, in the black creators' way, why they're not here. Maybe they have to work. Maybe they don't know about this because they're not connected to the right channels. Uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. So we're trying to uh, open up the field and make it more accessible. And just uh, to follow up on that, what are sort of the categories of roles that you uh, cover? Because I know it's like it's execs um, as well as just like you know filmmakers, like writer, producer, directors. Yes, uh, thanks for that. It's it's both uh, on the creative side and also on the corporate side. Um, on the corporate side, we have a program called the Mid Career Accelerator, and that's for 
black black um, employees of corporations at at uh, like for example Ontario Creates. Um, you know, we've been talking with them about doing something. Uh, right now, we have someone at Telefilm at the CMF, where they need to. They're doing their job. They want to advance, and they need to develop certain skills in order to advance to the next level. And so we work with the employer to craft a game plan to give them those skills, three to five critical experiences that they need to experience in that job to be ready to go to the next level. Because as much as we talk about, for example, Telefilm with the less than 1% of black women being their directors, less than 1% of their members being black women directors, if you look on the corporate side, less than, you know, if there's, there's, a, there's a goal to help open up the corporate boardroom by having three to five percent by 2024 for many corporations and be people of color or black people. So you can just see system-wide that there's a lack of access and a lack of representation. And we know that people who are in the decision-making roles, if they are black, then there's a good chance that more black content will be green-lighted or will be funded. Right? And that's, uh, that's just the way it is. I mean, right now, the way it's set up, um, you see the films and, and the projects that are being uh, funded and greenlit often reflect who's in charge, right? So we need to open that up as well, that space as well. Thank you for that. I'm going to ask you one more question. But before I do, I just want everyone in the audience to know, start thinking of your questions. Uh, I'm happy to open this up as soon as we possibly can, because there's so many people here, and I want you each to have your, well, maybe not each of you, but most of you to have some time to ask a question. Um, Andy, one f follow up. Um, I shall throw this at all the panelists. Um, what are like some common mistakes? I mean, the BSO is still relatively new, but what are some common mistakes filmmakers uh, have when they're applying to your various funds? You can, this can be general. Um. Well, I, th I think a common mistake is that they're not being specific enough. Um, you know, there are things, one of, one of the main questions we ask is, why are you applying to this program, <laughs> right? <laughs> what do you hope to get out of it? And for example, uh, you know, we're, we're taking a delegation to the Cannes Film Festival, and uh, the, the deadline just closed, and we're going to be doing the jury um, on Monday. So I've had a chance to look over all the applications. And the ones who answer, well, I want to expand my filmmaking world, and I want to do some great networking, and I think it'll be great to advance my career at this stage if I was to meet international producers and distributors. That's all good, that's all fine, but it's very general. As opposed to, well, I have this project, and now I've got my, one of the criteria is that they have to have 20% production financing, okay? so. I have this project, now I have my 20% production financing. I'm at the stage where I need to find an international co-producer from Germany, and I need to come to Cannes, so that, because that's where they all, they all come. That's a much more specific answer that gives us like, okay, there's a plan here. So I would say that's one thing. Thank you for a specific answer to my general question. Um, <laughs> Anna, what, uh, what are the common pitfalls that you've noticed? Uh, the thing about the film fund, um, we have a number of requirements. We probably have more requirements than everyone that, that, that's here on the panel. You know, the, the one thing is in order for you to be able to apply to us, you actually have to have 70% of your financing in place. It's quite significant. And so then uh, by the time the jury meets, about two and a half months after you've applied, we expect you then to be able to show to us that you're 100% financed. So we are a last-in financier. I think the big thing that happens is people aren't financed and they come into us and then we end up kicking them out <laughs> because they just don't meet that, that threshold. Um, and we cannot support a project unless we know that we are definitely the last in. Um, the other thing is, you know, we have a number of producer requirements. We are producer driven, so even though the applicant is an, a production company, uh, we're looking at the lead Ontario producer, and so you do have to have uh, a certain uh, producer requirements. If you don't meet that, which a lot of you here in this audience may not meet that threshold that we, that we require, you can bring on an executive producer who 
does meet that producer qualification. And you have to have a conversation with us. We have to pre-approve this person. Um, and then that will allow you to come in and apply to us. So there are some that don't have that producer requirement. And again, they get kicked out. So I think it's always the financing chain of title. <laughs> you know, you have to prove to us that you own the, the, the project. Um, and sometimes they don't, and then they get kicked out again. So I think those, those are always like the big things. And then whenever we ask, whatever document we ask for, you have to submit it to us. There is one document. It's the schedule of minimum commitment of Ontario expenditures. This one document alone is worth 40% of your overall score, so it's quite significant. And if you leave it off the list, you're not, you know, we're not going to bother. You're just going to automatically kick you out. So I think that's the thing is reading through the the guidelines, understanding all of the requirements before you um, before you submit that application to us. Thank you, Peter. I want to sound completely opposite. <laughs> <laughs> we're the, happy to be the first funder in. Uh, you can come to us with absolutely no funding uh, and just a lot of, you know, hopes and dreams. Uh, you don't have, you know, your project, I said we have a maximum of 250. Uh, you know, we, we have the, we have smaller levels of funding than 250. Uh, we don't even fund 250, but you're coming to us looking for that sort of, you know, money to then ask other people for funding. And most of our projects sit around like the 40 or $50,000 mark is what they're actually making. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I wanted to say, this is, this is your money. This is the Toronto Arts Council is funded by Toronto, the city of Toronto. This is your money. You deserve it. You come to us and you, you, you pitch to us like this. Don't be apologetic about your pitch. <laughs> Don't say, can I please have some money? No, get, a, get, get the, the, the panel on your side and really demonstrate to us that this project is, is worthwhile and, and great for you to make and great for the community to, to see. Um, you can uh, be a Toronto artist and uh, make it anywhere in the world. So that's a, you know, another difference. I just had someone call me today asking if they can go to Kurdistan and live in Toronto. And I'm like, yeah, you can do that. Um, so you're asking, oh, for, for uh, faults. Yeah. So, you know, don't, uh, you're talking to other filmmakers. That's who the panel makes the decisions are. So you don't have to spend your time. Um, describing the film community or describing what a film is. Um, we get like, you know, in the dawn of time, film was. Uh, don't, don't spend time doing that. Get into like what is happening in your project and do not use in a single exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a very important note. No exclamation marks, duly noted. Uh, Hillary, I, I so- I would be in trouble, I love exclamation marks. <laughs> Tell me, tell me sort of, I guess, maybe about the, the pitfalls and the fun, but also uh, maybe like if I'm going to approach you and say, Hillary, I have this great idea for this new film, uh, what are the pitfalls even in that communication, perhaps? Yeah, I think um, I sort of fall somewhere in between in terms of when we want to hear from you. I think it's something even producers that we love and have worked with before, to the point about that telefilm doing a half million and under fund, you don't need a distributor on board to apply for that fund, but, and maybe James will contradict me, I like to think it helps because you're applying to Telefilm showing that you have market interest. And for us, it's nice to be involved on, at that stage because it's a stage where we can be truly involved. We can talk to you about casting. We can look at your finance plan and see if it's something that makes sense for us. We can read the script and give feedback on the script. So for us, we like to be really involved and that's kind of like a good time for us to get involved is when you're making those applications to those funders. With that in mind, if it's something where you're saying like, I have a cool idea, it's probably a bit early for us to have that conversation because we want to make sure that we're the right partner to help and for us to be able to do that, we really do need to be able to read the script and see a finance plan, but it doesn't have to be locked. It doesn't have to be this money is secured, but just being able to say like, okay, that's where your budget sits, your tax credits make sense, that I think that's a realistic ask that you're making from this funder, and there's the gap, and is it something that we can help you fill? So that's kind of my sweet spot for when we want to hear from people. And I guess the pitfall is coming too soon or too late. But the nice thing with too soon is I can just say, come back later. 
and with Too Late, it doesn't mean that we can't be involved. We pick up stuff at festivals, so we can come on board later in the process, but it just means that we can be involved in a less significant way than if we're coming on board early and we can start having those very early conversations about how are we gonna market this. And then I guess for the the BIPOC fund that you guys had, like in those initial couple rounds, were there any like sort of red flags that occurred to you in terms of people's applications? I mean, it kind of is related. We have very clear asks of what we're looking for. And part of that is the finance plan. And often that wasn't submitted or it was submitted, people would submit a budget, which is not the same thing as a finance plan. And um, people who just very clearly didn't, A, have an idea of exactly what they were gonna make and how they were gonna make it. And um, people whose idea is not achievable at that level. So that's, it's great as part of our jury having people with production experience who are reading those applications, because I always think of a particular example that I won't obviously say who it was, but stuff that's applying at a talent to watch level, which is under 250, that has huge casts, that has a plane crash, that has all these like big budget ideas that are just not achievable at that budget. Um, so I think that's maybe a piece of advice I can give, especially for first time filmmakers, is when you're working with a, if you are a writer or when you're working with a writer, think about what you can make at that level in a way that is gonna have that production value and still be something that you aren't setting yourself up for a lot of future stress. Or I guess the other thing you could do in that situation is if you are a filmmaker who has like a VFX background and you can make that plane crash for $5, then you need to include that in your package be like, totally. blah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. Give us, give us all the information so that we know exactly what you are working with. Thanks, Hillary. Uh, Mr. James, what, uh, what yes. are our common mistakes? I know there's a bunch of different programs we're talking about here. Uh, I thought everyone would be all about the talent to watch, but uh, yeah, what are common pitfalls across the board, we'll say? Well, um, at the talent to watch level or at the low budget level, um, actually at any level. When we're talking about projects, we're usually talking about the script um, and the amount of development that, that's gone into a script and how intentional and deliberate it is and how focused it is and, and how much you've gotten feedback on it and, and worked it, that, that shows a, a lot when, when they come into us. So it's time and development before and, and taking that time uh, to, to get it vetted by friends, whoever will read it, uh, people who may not be your target audience, people who may even push against what you've got. Um, it's doing that. And also, you know, at the at the lower budget level, at the entry level, at, at Talent to Watch and at low budget, we're, we're not looking for people who are sort of writing to uh, market expectations or writing to sort of like what they think telefilm expectations are. We're <clears throat> we're often talking about these projects in terms of the, the personal connection that the filmmakers have to the material. Um, so at the lower budget level, that is that is more important. Um, doing something that, that uh, personally expresses uh, yourself um, and that you're committed to that. And I always say, you know, the one thing, maybe at the bigger budget level, there are things that are more like market driven and we expect that, that's great. There's a there's room for that. But at the, at the lower budget level, um, what tends not to work is our sort of engineered projects that, you know, say, okay, we think this is a trend, so we're going to write something to that. And then we'll attach this director to sort of create this package. Um, but those teams that come up organically and have worked together and that have, share a sensibility and that are putting out a personal sensibility, that's what tends to work at the at the lower budget levels. And even that could even be like a genre project. That could be a horror project. We've seen pitches, you know, from from teams that are so excited about, you know, being the next Peter Jackson, you know, or um, you know, doing their their low budget horror thing. And it's a personal thing. Um, so that's that's kind of that's that's one of the things that that uh, I would say works and and that the other end doesn't work you know if it's too engineered at the low budget level all right thanks for that um I, i'm gonna be a little wild and just start with questions if anyone has any to, what, what are we looking at i see at least one hand so let's just start and i'll fill in the silence um, Uh, 
uh, basically as a first time filmmaker applying to the Toronto Arts Council, uh, there's like a verification and uh, it's a little intimidating, so explain. <laughs> so, um, I mean, for so government funding at the artist level, so Ontario Arts Council, Canada Council, and Toronto Arts Council, uh, each have different ways of going about things. So Toronto Arts Council, you have to have made one project before. So if you've made one project, we have um, the verification at Toronto Arts Council is, uh, do you live in the city of Toronto? Um, and are you a student or not? You can't be a student to apply. Um, and, I, and if you're, are you over 18? Um, and that's the end of the verification. Uh, so, uh, it's, and uh, we don't, you know, you, you sign up and then you get your, your into the system, uh, you know, within minutes. Um, Canada Council is a longer verification where they allow you to, to go particular directions depending on your experience. But, you know, at Toronto Arts Council, if you're like, I've got, you know, a new project that I want to make, you know, you can start looking at the application when it's up. It's not up yet for Media Arts. It'll be up in June for Media Arts. Um, and then you can start filling in the a answers and you can call me and say, hey, Peter, like, am I doing it right? Or what do you think of this idea? Or, and like, lean on your friends as, as you know, we hopefully all said hi to someone you didn't know earlier. Um, start leaning on these people to sort of figure out how to apply. But um, as much as, you know, there's pages and pages of guidelines, it is um, fairly easy. And coming here and listening to us chat is, you know, a really good first step. Oh, and I just wanted to say to everyone, make sure in the budgets you pay yourselves. I have so many people coming to us going, I have this great project and it's a, you know, it's the project I love to make. I'll make it for nothing. They never get a grant. Make sure you pay yourself. All right. I'm going to go way to the back. Hopefully you can project. Uh, I'm just going to point at, yeah, you. For, for a single channel uh, films and documentaries, yeah. It's just the director. And then if there are co-creators, do they both live in Toronto? Um, so we'll take up to two co-directors, and the two co-directors have to live in the city of Toronto. But if, uh, if you have a co-director that doesn't live in the city of Toronto, you don't put them on the application, and it's just your application. <laughs> <laughs> but don't tell anybody that. We will never tell anyone. Uh, I'm going to go for you over there with the hand up. Thanks. Um, so one of the hardest things for me, not knowing, not having had the experience is budgets. And I'm wondering if you could give any advice about where to get templates for budgets or um, without having to call you every second round. So uh, I guess the one question, does this apply to the Toronto Arts Council or to everyone? Okay, yeah, we'll do everyone. So, uh, Toronto Arts Council. So, there, um, at Toronto Arts Council, within the application, there's a budget that is already sort of set up for you with, you know, uh, several uh, lines that, that we expect that you would fill in. You don't have to fill them all in if it doesn't make for your project, or you can add lines, but it's all sort of set up. Uh, so you don't have to, you know, send us another budget or think much beyond what we're asking. I think Telefilm has a budget on your website. Am I right? Yeah. So Telefilm has, it's an industry standard budget. Um, I believe CMF may have it as well. CMF has like a standard um, recruitment schedule. So there are all these templates that you can find online. So I would definitely go to Telefilm if you're doing a, a feature and you're looking for a budget for that. All right, and I'll just follow up with that. So I think that's also one of those instances where, again, meet these people in the room and say, hey, have you ever applied to Telefilm before? Can I take a peek at your budget? Um, have you applied to the Toronto Arts Council? Like, what does a budget typically look like? Uh, and that's sort of a great starting point. All right, who else has a question? Oh, right, red toque or orange. I don't know, I could be colorblind. Um, I think it's really important to highlight the BIPOC initiatives and um, the statistics that Andy was speaking on is really reflective of people 
people just losing faith to even begin that journey, um, the really um, low turnout. And um, I'm speaking as a student at Toronto Film School, and I was just having this discussion with the director of production, Jordan Walker, a couple of days ago about whether or not he can allocate one of the green lit spots for a student that's facing systemic barriers because it speaks to diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. So it's, it's, a, it's a bigger umbrella than just BIPOC because there's also students with disability. So I think that conversation is really important. And my question is, would you have you or would you be willing to um, face these challenges on the front lines at schools such as Toronto Film School? Great question. Do you need to? That, uh, that's going to be a tough one to repeat, but it's uh, basically about uh, the inclusion, that there's a lot of inclusion barriers, uh, even as like a, a student, like how do you navigate that complexity? Um, and I, I assume you aim that at Andy. Yeah, no, great question. Um, to be honest, our focus has often been on the above the line uh, positions. So writer, director, producer. Uh, because those are the positions that create work that allows everything else to happen. So we haven't reached out to the schools directly. Um, however, my programming intern, Itete, is someone you should meet, that guy right there, because he's from the Toronto Film School. And we've met with Jordan. Part of the reason that he's here is because we've talked with Jordan. Uh, and Jordan has helped us out with different interns uh, uh, along the way. And so that's in, like a, a particular conversation that I'm sure we'd be willing to have uh, with Jordan. Um, I, I will say though, in general, we don't have a, an initiative to reach out to the schools, uh, not at this point. As Richard mentioned, we're two years old. We're, we started November 2020. As we grow, right now we have four staff and, and an intern. Uh, so as we grow, we may be able to expand the scope of what we can do. But thank you for raising that point. And can I ask a quick question to, uh, it's Peter, yes? Yeah. Okay. Um, living in the city of Toronto, does that mean GTA or is that city of Toronto? <laughs> uh, that's city of Toronto. That's uh, Etobicoke to Scarborough, the water to North York. Your mayor is, you're about to choose your new mayor. <laughs> Whoever, someone in this room could be your new mayor. <laughs> Uh, I, I was going to follow up too, and I think, you know, in terms of, I'm going to just aim this directly at you, like, if you are, like, having issues, I think, you know, you should hustle. Uh, you should reach out to filmmakers and say, hey, how, uh, how can you help us out making this film? You know, I'm blah, 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 this is my spiel, and you, can you, can you give me some help, assistance of some sort? Because there are a lot of filmmakers out there who might just say yes, if you get into their DMs and say, hey, I'm making this short film. I can't make a short film. I, I don't have $1,000 to spend on making a short film. What do you, how can you help me out? Uh, I saw lots of hands go up. I'm going to go for front row. Thank you. Uh, this is 204. Um, we run visual effects, and our company often receives people who've had budgets of 250, 150. They've thrown it all on production. And now they need compositing or they need some sort of tracking or painting, and they don't have the money for it. Do any of you four offer to the filmmaker funds so that he can go into post production? Can he, she, please, we, they? <coughs> um, enabling them to find financing for that particular step because their original budget has already been eaten up. So the question is uh, VFX funding for a filmmaker who's already like pretty much wrapped up their project, in a nutshell. Yes, we'll fund post-production. They can come at a post-production stage and uh, show what they've shot um, and then ask for you know, funding to finish it off. Oh, James, what, what about you? Can you give us some VFX funds? Uh, yes, that, uh, so uh, Talent to Watch doesn't have a, a post-production fund, but at the um, at the low budget level, you can apply with a post production uh, project um, and get fifty, seventy five thousand. Um, it's if you get to a rough cut and uh, 
and you, you uh, can apply as a post-production. Look at our guidelines. There, there are um, opportunities to apply coming up. Um, get a get a rough cut into us. Make make an application. Um, it's it's not an oversubscribed uh, segment of of what we see. We don't see a ton of these. Maybe out of sixty that come into Ontario production projects, five of them are post production. Um, so it, there is an opportunity there, uh, and also theatrical docs also has uh, uh, that fund has post production funding opportunities as well. Excellent. So just to re repeat that in a different way, shoot your film and then go to Telefilm for post funds, and James will give you money. All right, James, define first-time filmmaker. Oh, OK. So it's, um, there is some flexibility in the Talent to Watch uh, program. So uh, for producers, um, you, it, because there aren't a lot of producers uh, in the mix at the low budget level, you can have made a previous uh, Talent to Watch film or low budget film and still be considered uh, an entry-level producer for the Talent to Watch program. For directors, um, you, you, th there is some flexibility in that you can have made um, a previous micro-budget film um, and that, that had a limited release. Uh, you know, maybe it was, it was financed through uh, means outside of you know, government assistance um, or outside of the Talent to Watch program you would still uh, be eligible as a first-time filmmaker. But then the, uh, to be the, the baseline eligibility is that, that you've uh, at least made a short film um, and are moving into the feature film space. Thank you. Um, Hillary, first-time filmmaker doesn't necessarily matter to Not you. Not so much for us. I mean, specifically for the BIPOC fund, we are looking for more creators in the emerging space, which we do tend to define as sort of like one to three feature films. Um, so that's really anything over, the, I think the telephone definition is 75 minutes. Um, that, but I mean, anybody who, if it's your genuine first time, you're more than welcome to apply. Um, the other thing I will say just before I forget that tied to the budget question um, is to remember Lyft is a resource for you all in Toronto and they do lots of great like very specific workshops and talks so it, it's worth looking into their programming probably for most people in this room. Uh, Peter I, I feel like we've defined first-time filmmaker but let's just again in a nutshell. I can redefine it. Yeah <laughs> redefine uh, it. Uh, you've made something uh, within the media arts uh, before. It doesn't have to be something that we can fund. It can as long as it is something that you consider media arts. It doesn't matter if it's been distributed. You could have made it as a student, as long as it's something. And you're over 18, and you're not a student anymore. That's pretty easy. Uh, Anna, does the first time filmmaker? No, we're the mean ones. <laughs> so we do not support first time producers on your own. The requirement for a producer is you have to be Ontario resident, Canadian, and you also have to have produced a feature film, regardless of drama or doc, it doesn't matter. So a feature film that was um, you know, theatrically released in Canada or was broadcast in Canada um, or you produced a drama or doc series that was broadcast in Canada. So you do have to have something. Um, if you don't meet that requirement, that's what I said earlier, we would allow you to bring on an executive producer who does meet those qualifications. And they would be, like, you know, you're applying yourself as the producer, but you have to attach them onto your project. We have to pre-approve this person. You have to have a, a letter of commitment from this person. We want to make sure that they are, in fact, attached to your project. Um, and that's how we would be willing to take a chance on, a, we, like I refer to them as more of an emerging producer um, rather than first time producer. So, I mean, you know, honestly, like if you've, if you've done um, a short film, you wouldn't qualify for us. If you did a web series, you wouldn't qualify for us. So we are, we do have a number of requirements. And the reason we have all these requirements is we have so little money 
um, and we have a high rate of applications that come to us. So we have to put in these restrictions because we, we are so overly subscribed. Uh, Andy, not really a relevant question for you, is it? Uh, first time filmmaker? It, it is actually in a, in a weird way when it comes to uh, the programming requirements. Um, a lot of our programs have competition, um, a lot of people applying, and so it's difficult to be a first time um, writer or first time director to get into, uh, into the Rogers Writers Script Development Program, for example, or to get into the Black Women Directors Accelerator because what we want to do is give people careers, and often that comes after you've already put in some sweat equity. So, um, yeah, we don't, we don't uh, necessarily have a lot of space for first time, like brand new. Uh, what we would do, though, is recommend you to go to some other programs that do have a lot of emerging um, skills building uh, programs, that, like organizations like Real World or OYA, um, BIPOC TV and film, there you go. Yeah, so there's a lot of other organizations that, that will provide that. So Andy will connect you. All right, uh, I'm gonna go for back row, I think maybe wearing a baseball hat. I won't commit to that. Uh, my question is to Peter and Andy. So basically, I just moved to this country like three months ago. And, but back in India, I, did, I, I worked as a story producer and was part of like a couple of writers. Now, the idea is like I'm studying filmmaking jokes. And I would really, you know, uh, love to like get my first short film out and get to apply for the writer's program, right? So, would somebody like me be, would get a chance to be part of that? Or, so the question is that. So, yeah, the question is a newcomer uh, applicant to uh, either Peter or Andy. Yeah, absolutely. If you meet the requirements, so if you've done something in India, then for the writer's program, you just need to show us a writing sample. Um, I, I will say, uh, you know, people, some people that don't have experience that we've, we've said, okay, maybe you, maybe just show us that, not that you've written a film, but you've written something. We want 20% of the writer's program to be at least French, uh, have French representation from Quebec. And we found, we've done it now for two rounds, and we found that the writers from Quebec really haven't had much opportunity to get anything done, and black writers in, in particular. And so, we, this last time, in order to get enough applicants, because we did a lot of outreach, um, we said, okay, let's take away that requirement of you writing something in uh, a script form. And even if you've written like a short story, you've written poems, you've written something, just to let us know that you actually want to write, as opposed to, oh, there's a chance to get some money here, let me figure out something, right? That's the only thing. Sometimes, and I want to just expand this a little bit, to just say thanks to the industry in general, because you've all heard them say that they have programs targeted towards black and underrepresented communities. And I think that's a really great step that's been a, an awakening since 2020, since the, 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 uh, the, the racist, racism awakening, so to speak. Um, and that I'm really applauding the industry for having provided those programs. I pray that they stay <laughs> and they don't go because now the COVID funding is going away, and uh, you know now it's becoming a little bit more normal operations. I really hope that the money and the commitment to keep those uh, programs and that those levels of access open uh, remains for a while, because it, it, you know as we all know, films take a while to get done, to get made, and to see the the result. So another five years, if that was, if it was to remain open for another five years. I really believe you'll see a great growth in the amount of black and people of color content out there. Uh, I'll just answer, yeah. So um, there's a couple different spaces to think about a Toronto Arts Council. There's um, a newcomer and refugee grant you can apply to that you'd be working along with, uh, you know, someone in the industry in Toronto uh, for a year. You'd both receive five thousand uh, dollars. The deadline is couple of weeks, in fact. Um, and, uh, and if you want to learn like how to sort of move about the Toronto film industry, you might want to look at that. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, uh, you have to be a Canadian citizen, protected person, or what's the third one? I had it in my head a second. I'll find out. Permanent resident. Permanent resident. Yes, of course. Um, uh, and you have to have been here for, live in Toronto for at least a year before applying. So. Uh, you would want to apply, uh, yeah, in 
2024 for uh, uh, visual or for media arts or for um, any of the other programs other than the newcomers and refugees program. All right, uh, who is next? I'm gonna go white shirt maybe up there. Andy, uh, how many people in the BIPOC program? I mean, there's a few of them. Uh, there's just the one program, okay. right, which is the Writers Script Development Program. Uh, we take 16 writers in general. In the last two rounds, there's been 16 writers. Eight are black and eight are, are people of color. Short and sweet. Uh, gentleman with the glasses. So quick question, uh, if you're talking to a distributor as a producer, when is that time to drop an email and say hi? Yeah, I mean, I think it is, uh, you kind of touched on it. There's no perfect time, but I think for us, and I'm sure for any distributor, having that script in a place that you think is really strong and ready to share is important because you're probably not going to get a lot of people who are going to read it twice if they didn't like it the first time. So having it somewhere where you think like, this is close, uh, but you're still open to feedback is also important because the distributor is probably gonna have some. Um, having that finance plan in a place where you think it's realistic, a solid pitch deck. Um, if you're somebody that has never worked with that distributor before, I would suggest ask your community if there's somebody who can help you make an introduction because that always is gonna carry a little bit more weight if it's coming from somebody that we have a relationship with before. Um, but also just like doing stuff like this, being involved. I've had, I, that's why I just referenced it. I've like talked at Lyft before and had people reach out to me through that. Um, I worked at the CFC, which is another great place to go and learn for emerging filmmakers. And that people that I met at the CFC, we still work with all the time. Um, so I think that advice that you opened up with of like, building that community around you because those are people that you're going to hopefully be working with for the next 30, 40, 50, 60 years of your career. Um, that's not really an answer to your question, but it's just a thing I wanted to say. Um, but yeah, I guess the bottom line is sort of when you feel that like this is a fully realized project that I'm ready to share, but you're still very open to feedback. I think depending on where you're at, like if you have a piece of cast attached, then that's obviously gonna be something that's attractive to any funder, um, but it's not necessary to start the conversation. Um, and it's similar, like if you have Telefilm in, then that's great because we know that this is something that's very likely to go and we can have sort of a different conversation than we have when it's saying, this is something that I'm applying, uh, but there's no right or wrong time and the big takeaway is always like, don't be afraid to contact us because it's too soon. All right, I'm sure we have lots more questions. I'm just gonna see. Okay, uh, I wanna make sure I include everyone. Uh, black hat, black hat person. Uh, when it comes to first time and emerging filmmakers, where would the commercial directors, uh, I guess, sit if they never done the narrative or if they don't like one narrative in the favorite role like that kind of thing, um, where would they kind of so the question is, if you're a commercial director, how do you fit into this? Uh, is there a specific funder you want to ask that question of? I guess it's kind of general, but um, I just want to make sure. Sure, I mean, like you're sort of saying that as a commercial director, then you're going to come make your own. Uh, so at Toronto Arts Council, uh, the directors have to own their own uh, uh, piece that they're making. So they have to have complete creative control over the work they're coming for. Um, if you've made one thing before, if it was a commercial thing and you didn't have complete control, that's fine to come with us um, with that one piece that you've made. Uh, we sort of uh, have you know, a loose rule of you know, two to seven years, you've shown locally you're a level one director. Over seven years, you've shown nationally or internationally, you're a level two director. But those rules are, you know, are, are not very hard. 
Uh, so if you have been making lots and showing nationally, internationally as, um, as a director, and you've only been doing it for four years, you might want to come as level two. But if you've been doing, you know, making stuff for 10 years and it's only been showing locally, then you want to come as a level one. So um, if you're having questions on where you want to go, I'm always happy to sit down uh, for a coffee or go on Zoom or do emails. I used to always suggest coffee, but uh, now in this new world. Um, but, you know, having coffee with, with artists is, is my favorite thing to do gets me out of the office. I don't like being in the office very much. So, so please take me up on that. So I guess just yeah, a quick follow up to that would be if all you've ever done is commercials that have been typically for a client, you might still have to generate a, a unique piece of art that says I, I'm eligible to apply to the Toronto Arts Council? No, you can use your, your complete commercial um, uh, experience to say that, you know, I've made all of these commercial projects, um, but, you know, this is what I really want to make. Excellent. Uh, up here, I'm just going to sort of point in your direction. Yes, you. Okay, so this is a semi-complicated question. The idea is like, if, if I'm a director, I can apply to the Toronto Arts Council, for example, uh, but I can't necessarily apply to Telefilm. So how does it interact with, you know, the producer needing to be the person, I guess, having key creative control and then applying to like Telefilm and uh, the Toronto Arts Council and how that interacts? Is that sort of the... The ship, yeah. So uh, we'll start with Peter on this one. Sure. I mean, uh, Ontario Arts Council, you can't get both OAC and telephone. Toronto Arts Council, we will allow you to do TAC and telephone. So. Uh, I mean, the thought is that, you know, throughout the project, yeah, you own creative control, but when you're, you know, comfortable and you're like, okay, I've got this done, you can sign it over to the producer who will then finish it off with telephone. That's, uh, you know, that's what we hope. <laughs> so it's, it's about applying first, I guess. Well, I mean, TAC can always be the first one in. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you're thinking, okay, to get the ball rolling with my project and to demonstrate that I have some funds in it, I'll apply to TAC and then use it to apply to other things. That's great. I might leave that question there because we have less than 10 minutes. So who else is uh, in line? Uh... James is trying to get a hold of you. Yeah, tell us what oh. Okay, James, what do you want to say? <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, about the Toronto Arts Council thing, Yes, we have had uh, projects that have that, that, that structure in them. Um, on Talent to Watch, you can structure your uh, production company uh, with the director as, as the owner of the project, um, which would be in alignment with the Arts Councils. Thank you, James. Uh, person wearing a watch. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so much for this insight. It's, it's really valuable. Um, So the question is, how does a dual citizen uh, access funding um, for their project? Let's go for Telefilm for that. Um, well, you, uh, uh, in, in terms of, say, the Talent to Watch uh, uh, program, you have to be a Canadian citizen uh, per, or permanent resident. Um, and as far as dual citizenship, um, I would I would reach out to our business affairs or, or one of our coordinators about that. I don't know the, 
the finessing of, of that. Fair enough. Um, is, does that answer your question, or should we talk to Ontario Creates as well? I'm assuming that there is not a treaty with Ecuador, right? That's the El Salvador. So right, so that that's part of the the problem. So um, then it would have to basically just be a, a, a domestic production. So you wouldn't be able. So you can't. You couldn't co-produce outside of um, outside of a treaty on an international level. And it's actually the Telefilm Co-Production Office in Montreal is the one that you can reach out to and ask all these sort of questions because they're the ones that approve everything. Um, we just follow whatever the telephone co-production office says so um, but if there is no treaty then they're not going to approve that so it would have to be 100% Canadian production um, so is you know is, is that what you can possibly do or it has to be with a certain group down uh. then definitely the co-production, the telephone co-production office in Montreal. Because it's between them and CAVCO. Um, they're the two bodies that approve of this and sign off on that. Um, you know, we just say, if it's an international co-production, you have to have the telefilm sign off and the CAVCO sign off. Um, but we don't actually look into any of that stuff. We just accept what they do. All right, if someone has a really quick question, we can probably get it in. Any takers? Uh, I'm going to go all the way to the back again. I haven't been there for a while. hundred percent for sure I love meeting people I coffee zoom whatever people are comfortable with uh, and definitely of course like we want to hear it kind of comes back to the idea of like tell us as much information as possible so if you have a project that you are excited about you are ready to share the script you have a cool EP attached like definitely we want to have that conversation and my email is on our website so I'm like a deeply accessible person all right, I think I'm going to just uh, wrap it up there with some final thoughts that'll just come out of my head. Uh, feel free to reach out to almost everyone on this panel, even though they haven't consented yet. Um, but I'm sure they will uh, when you have something to share with them, like when you're able to buy them a coffee or connect with them. Oh, don't in a don't meeting. buy us a coffee. We'll okay. buy you a coffee. Wow, yeah. really? <laughs> yeah, there's more incentive there already. Um, don't buy them a coffee. Contact them, tell them about your project when it's at that stage or maybe even earlier sometimes. Um, meet some people in the room after we get out of here and network. And what else can I tell you? Uh, as a filmmaker, I'll tell you that if you can get on one of the juries for one of these organizations, that's also very helpful because you get to look at other applications and you can maybe see what some common pitfalls are or what makes a great application. Uh, I don't know how to access that. We can't really talk about that because They'll kick me out in two minutes. Um, so yeah, try to sit on jury uh, at uh, one of the organizations. Try to uh, try to be a screener at a film festival and see what kind of films make it into the film festival. Attend the film festival. Attend the rest of our panels. And uh, the last thing I will say is thank you all for coming out. This is an amazing turnout. Uh, and I'd like to thank our panelists. And thank you, James, in particular, for hopping on a Zoom, even though you're not feeling well. And uh, yes, I thank That's you. It. Jen's thank say you, some stuff. Richard, who I actually forgot to mention, is also a CFF uh, programmer. 
film programmer. So thank you, Richard, as, as well as Ashley and Alex and Laura, who I don't think is here. So make sure you see some of these incredible films that they programmed that are playing every night this week. We have two films a night. You can check out the titles on the website. Also, please stick around. We have two more panels today. Um, digital series as case study on streams flow from a river starts in half an hour at 2 p.m. And Better Our Sets, which is a spotlight on new emerging roles in the industry that are working to make our sets healthier, happier, uh, greener, uh, better. So uh, stick around for that. But I'm going to ask everybody to please, oh, and also thank you, Super Channel. Thank you, Telefilm. Thank you, Ontario Creates, who for their generous support that allow us to have these amazing conversations. And a uh, big shout out to Distillery uh, Restaurants, um, who uh, are going to be sending you all a special thank you later. So <laughs> thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you at 2 p.m. <laughs>